So the first thing that I'm gonna tell you guys about is rhetoric, okay? Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna use rhetoric to analyze a, an advertisement, okay? So now you know we're analyzing advertisements. Okay, advertisements use rhetoric. And rhetoric comes to us from the Greeks, okay? So it was a way of verbally persuading an art, an audience. So it's the art of persuasion. Okay, um, there are three appeals as a part of rhetoric, okay? And these are the things that you're gonna look for when you're analyzing the advertisement, okay? So, we have logos, ethos, and ethos. Have any of you heard of these before? Yes, some of you are saying yes. Good. Um, the OS on the end means that they're Greek words, okay? So they do have like an English definition, okay? But you want to remember that these are the appeals, okay? The rhetorical appeals within a text. So like, I know I always tell this little story. When I was in college, I learned about the rhetorical appeals in English 1, kind of like what you guys are doing right now. But I remember going into the hallway and talking to my teammates and being like, hey, we're learning about rhetoric. And they're like, what's rhetoric? And I'm like, well, logos, pathos, and ethos. And then they're like, well, what does that mean? And I'm like, I don't know. Logos is logic. And they're like, what does that have to do with anything? And I was like, I don't know. I just know it means logic, right? And it's because I don't remember, I'm sure my teacher said this and I wasn't paying attention, that these are the appeals to logic, right? So if you're watching a video and it's trying to appeal to your sense of logic, right, which is logos, what could that video do to appeal to your sense of logic? Okay, let me, let me rephrase that differently. If I'm trying to convince you guys that you should purchase this marker because it will change your life, what could I, what information could I give you that would logically convince you to purchase this? Right. Okay, so factual information, right? Yep. Okay, what else? What could I tell you about it that would help convince you logically? It's like uses, like how it uses the word Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Those are all facts about it. But what else? What about research? So like statistics and data. Would that convince you logically if I said, okay, but 90% of students who purchased this said it was effective and it changed their life. Would that convince you? Think about Instagram, right? Yes. You have all these people on Instagram and they're like, well, look at me, you can see the percentage. It only took me two weeks and I, my butt grew 14% while using this waist trainer, right? And then people buy it, right? Because why? They're saying they're trying to logically appeal to you through statistics, right? Hey, so, so we've got statistics, data, Okay, just so you know, I'm recording this on a phone and I'm gonna put it on YouTube, but I just wanted to tell you in case you don't wanna talk or do wanna talk or whatever. Okay, so facts, stats, data, all that stuff is logic. So anytime you hear a number, it's probably gonna trigger like, oh, this is logos, this is logic, right? Um, so think about like the toothpaste commercials. 10 out of 10 dentists recommend this product or like nine out of 10. And it's like, what, what dentists are you asking? Like nine out of ten one dentist doesn't like crest toothpaste like what does it make sense but that's logos okay so anytime you hear a number right or definitely what you guys were saying was like how to use the product what's the price that kind of information that's factual information about the product that's going to logically convince the audience potentially to purchase the product okay pathos pathos is the appeal to the audience's emotions. <coughs> okay, so how 
could somewhat appeal to your sense of emotions, right? Whether that's happiness or sadness or anger or whatever. Can you think of any example commercials that do this? So, two things about that. That is, it depends on what you mean by that, right? If you're talking about like you're a good person if you help these kids, that's ethos, that's ethics, right? But if they're showing these kids looking super sick and sad and like that they don't get to go out and do things and it's like super sad, that's emotions, right? So think about this. What is it about those commercials that make you as an audience member feel something? What about the images, right? Okay, so images are one way that videos can appeal to your sense of emotions, right? Or use pathos. Okay, what else? Think about, have you guys seen that ASPCA commercial or like any of them where it's like Sarah McLaughlin, you guys may not know who she is, but it's a singer on a couch like petting her golden retriever and in the back of your hair, in the arms of the angels, fly away from here, right? I'm not a good singer, but the song is like super freaking sad to begin with, right? And then the words of the song are sad because what are they saying? In the arms of the angels, fly away from here. What does that mean? That somebody died, right? Yeah. Yeah. So music, right? That's another example of pathos. Okay. But don't forget with music, it's both the sound and the words. So sometimes like music sounds sad just because it's slow, right? Or music sounds really happy because it's fast or it sounds really scary because I don't know. Have y'all heard that new song? What is it? bury a friend by El... I don't remember, but I'm going to show you all the song. It sounds scary. It sounds like something out of a horror movie, and I'm obsessed with it, and I don't know why, because at first I was like, this is weird, right? But the sound of the music catches me, right? And it makes me feel something, and I think that's what draws us to music to begin with. And that's why commercials use music, right? Because it is emotional. Um, okay, and what else could a commercial do to convince you? In those com commercials with the little kids with cancer, who's usually talking to you? The kids. And that makes it worse, right? You're like, I'm hearing from this kid and I like, feel so sad for them, right? Because they're telling you their experience. Yeah, that's called an anecdote. Okay. And what that means is it's just like a personal story. Okay, so if there's a kid or someone on the screen saying, hey, if you donate to this company, they're going to help people like me. You're like, oh, shit, I feel bad. Like, I want to donate now. Right? Yeah. Okay, the other other thing, the biggest thing that commercials do is they play on empathy. Okay, what's empathy? You guys know? <laughs> Yeah, more than feel sorry too. It's like you really get it, okay? So like when one of our classmates emails and says, hey, my kiddo is super, super sick, right? I'm like, oh, I empathize with that because my kiddo is sometimes super, super sick. And there's really not a lot you can do if your kid is like really sick, right? You can't be like, okay, stay home. See ya, right? But people who've been in that situation get it. They empathize, right? More so. Okay, so commercials do this. They'll say, hey, student, you know those days when it's really cold and you just can't find a parking spot at the school and you're really frustrated because you know you're going to have to hike 14 miles, over-exaggeration, right? 14 miles to get to the door in the freezing cold and the wind is going to get you and you got to carry your backpack and then you got a project so you got all your project stuff, right? Remember that, student? And you're like, oh, I remember that in your head. Not talking out loud, hopefully, right? And then they say, we have the product for you. It's a, a button that you push and your car dissipates. And then you walk outside and your car comes back again and you just press the button and there it is. It appears automatically, right? You don't have, no more hikes to the car in the cold wind, right? You, as the student, potentially could empathize with that, right? And then might want to buy the product, okay? So think about any commercial where it's like showing a situation that you may have been in before. 
they're trying to draw on your empathy, right? To get you to feel for the people in the commercial and then therefore want to buy the product, which is most likely a solution for that problem that you have experienced, okay? So those are all pathos. Um, ethos, ethos has two parts, okay? One of them starts with E. So make sure that you're not thinking ethos, emotions, because that's wrong. Think ethos, ethics, okay, or credibility. Okay, so ethos has two parts, ethics and credibility. When we're talking about ethics, you guys mentioned those commercials where they're like, these people don't have clean water. If you donate five cents a day, you can help a child get clean water for a month or whatever, right? Or if you donate, you can help kids who can't afford this cancer treatment. And then they show you the kids, right? Okay, that's ethics. It's, is the commercial telling you that you are going to be a good person if you donate to their cause, believe in their idea, or purchase their product? Right, if so, that's ethics, okay? Credibility, right, is when you see, okay, so I'll give you this example. Last night, we got this email, and it looked like it was from Chase, right? And it said, like, you have a fraud, a fraud alert or something. And then we got a phone call, and it sounded like it was from Chase, except someone answered right away when we, like, called them back. And they were like, oh, can I get your credit card number to start processing your stuff? And immediately, right, that took away from their ethos. Because as soon as you call a credit card company, they don't always ask for your entire, they ask for the entire credit card number immediately, right? So that took away from their credibility, even though they appeared to be credible because they had the Chase logo in their email, they had Chase information in their phone call, they knew the last four digits of the credit card number, like weird, weird, weird stuff, okay? So think credibility as what's making them seem real, legit, right? So what are some things that commercials do to be credible? Who do they use to talk to you that might make them seem credible? Or famous people. That's one example of ethos of credibility, right? A famous speaker, like LeBron selling Sprite, or I gotta think of like a, I don't know, a different example than that. I always use that example. Um, you know, you, they show like famous soccer players wearing certain cleats. Like, okay, maybe you wanna buy those cleats because you see, you know, Ronaldo wearing these Nike, new Nike cleats. They're ugly as sin, right? But he's wearing them, so I wanna try them. Does that make sense? Okay, so famous speaker, that's credibility ethos, right? Who else could be in a commercial that might make you want to purchase a product? We're talking about toothpaste. Who are they going to show us on the screen? A dentist. a dentist, right? Or a doctor or someone. Hopefully not a doctor in the toothpaste commercial. I don't know, right? So when they have expert speakers, right? So if they tell you like, oh, this person is an MD or they are the leading expert in whatever or they work for so-and-so, that's going to give them ethos, credibility, okay? Also, here are some other examples that I'm not gonna write down, but you can write them down, right? If the company that makes the product is well known, right? And I like to specify this. You guys know who Nike is, and my friend from England would say Nike, and she would correct me and say I'm saying it wrong. Okay, you guys know that company. Whether or not you agree with their political standpoints, right, doesn't matter. They're still credible, right? So even if you hate that company because of the way they produce their product or whatever it is, are you wearing that huge sweatshirt? Um, it doesn't matter, they're still credible. Does that make sense? It doesn't mean whether you like them or not, it's like, do we know the name of the product? So one of my students was writing their essay and they were like, well, people, don't, people may or may not know who Sarah McLaughlin, the singer is, right? But in the commercial, she is a famous person, right? Like some people do know who she is. If not everyone knows who they are, they still have credibility. Does that make sense? So even if you were to look it up to know, it's likely that they use that person on purpose because they're known to groups of people, okay? So remember that when you're looking at credibility, right? So this is what you're gonna do, right? You're gonna look at an advertisement and you're gonna make a list and you're gonna say, where are they using logos? Where are they using pathos? Where are they using ethos to convince the audience to do something? Okay, 
So I'm gonna give you guys a thesis model. I'm gonna write it right here so it fits in this space, okay? So, and it's gonna give you that topic that's gonna help you know like what to even write for this essay. And we have a little bit more time with this essay as I told you guys previously, okay? So this is the thesis statement model that I give my students. And I ask you guys to follow it specifically for now. Um, because it's gonna really change your writing, okay? So this is a thesis statement, 6-0. How many sentences is this? Look carefully before you answer. One, it's one sentence, right? Your thesis statement is one sentence long, okay? But it's got three parts, and I break it down into three parts so it makes it a little easier for you guys to like comprehend what is going on here, and it's not so like overwhelming. Because I know sometimes you're writing a paper and you're like, what the heck is a thesis statement? How do I write that? What am I doing? Okay, so this first part, it says although, and then it has a blank, okay? This is the counterclaim, okay? Your counterclaim should be one piece of the other side that you agree with. Okay, specifically that you agree with. So sometimes when I ask people what's a counterclaim and they're like, it's just the opposite. Um, no, it's not just the opposite. It's gotta be one piece of the other side that you agree with, even if it's a teeny tiny piece, right? It's Ashish. Ashish says that apples are his favorite fruit and they're the best fruit, right? And I say, no, bananas are the best fruit, duh, right? Are we gonna get anywhere if he's like, no, it's apples, and I'm like, no, it's bananas. Are we gonna get anywhere? No. Probably not, right? He's gonna have his opinion, I'm gonna have mine, and we're gonna probably just argue and be ridiculous, right? But what if I said, apples are really high in fiber, and they're actually, I think they're really filling, and I really appreciate that about apples. But I think bananas are the best fruit because they are softer. You don't have to bite into them. It doesn't hurt your teeth when you bite into them. And you can put them in shakes and stuff and make, them, make shakes thicker. I really like the versatility of a banana, right? You might say, oh, okay, well, I can see that you appreciate the apple a little bit. Let me tell you about why I like the apple. Does that make sense? Like, see how the conversation was, would be able to, like, advance? That's why this part of this is so important. So don't just put the opposite of whatever here, right? So this assignment is about, oh, shit, that scared the fuck out of me. It's okay, we're good. Um, I got to edit that part out, too. <laughs> okay, uh, this is about the effectiveness of the commercial. Is the commercial effectively selling something to the audience? So you want to answer the question, um, does the commercial effectively convince the audience to X, whatever X is, right? So it might be donate to a company, right? Um, volunteer for a company, purchase a product, or believe in an idea. Okay, so X there can represent whatever. Okay, so when you're going to write your paper, choose a commercial that does convince the audience. That's the easy, sorry, that's the easiest way to do this. Choose a commercial that convinces the audience to whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna use, as an example, a toothpaste example, okay? And you guys can write this down as I'm saying it too. Okay, so we're talking about the claim now. This is your overall claim or argument. This is so, so important because this is where people usually get messed up. And if you mess this part up, that's like your whole essay, okay? So I might say, as an example, and you guys can write this down, although the commercial is lengthy and may lose the attention of the audience. Okay, so that is something from the opposite, right? If I think my commercial is effective in convincing the audience, right? I gotta think of one reason why someone would say, eh, it's not very effective, right? Okay, maybe it's too long. Maybe it's two minutes long and someone might turn it off before you get to the end of it. If y'all think about yourselves watching commercials, 
you look for that skip it button to skip it. Unless it gets your attention. There's been probably two or three commercials that have got really gotten my attention, like on YouTube to where I didn't skip it, I just watched it. Um, but usually I look for that skip it button, okay? So length might be a reason, a counter reason why it's not effective, okay? Make sure whatever you're putting here is not about the product. You're not gonna say, although there are many toothpaste brands, that's a no-no. That's what people usually want to put here, okay? You're not talking about the product in this essay. You're talking about the advertisement. So I argue that, right? The Crest toothpaste commercial called Brush Your Teeth is effective in convincing the audience to purchase Crest toothpaste because of its use of logos, pathos, and ethos. Okay, so that's your example thesis statement. You want me to say it again? Yes. Okay. Um, although the commercial is lengthy and may lose the attention of the audience, right? So that's your counterclaim. Like maybe you wanna ask yourself here, why is the commercial maybe not effective? It could be a teeny tiny reason or a big reason, whatever. Okay, so maybe it's too long. Although the commercial is lengthy and may lose the attention of the audience, comma, I argue that the Crest brush your teeth commercial is effective in convincing the audience to purchase Crest toothpaste, right? So we're putting that here because of its use of logos, pathos, and ethos, or whatever order you want to put them in. We're going to talk about that in a second. Okay, so you're basically giving me like an outline for your essay before you even write your essay, which is awesome for you and for me. For me, because I can like check you before you start, number one, and number two, for you, because you know what you're talking about. You don't just like sit down at the computer and say, are the thoughts gonna come to my head at any point, right? Like, what do I, where do I start? What do I write? What do I do? This is where you start always. Start with your thesis statement before you start writing anything else, okay? Um, Okay, let's talk about why I have you guys say I argue that. First of all, don't use I anywhere in your entire essay except for literally we're right here, okay, ever. Don't use I or you. That's another thing I'm gonna start marking on papers. Don't use you, right? But don't use I anywhere else. The reason I have you put it here is two reasons, two major reasons. The first major reason is because when I say, Sixto, what's your paper about? He's not gonna be like, uh an advertisement, right? Like, he's gonna go right here and be like, okay, I argue that, um, you know, the Crest toothpaste commercial is effective in selling this toothpaste, right? And I'm gonna be like, cool, you did what you were supposed to do, right? But a lot of times students catch themselves because they go and read this and they say, I argue that Crest toothpaste is the best toothpaste. Is that what you're supposed to be arguing? No, no you're not arguing about the product here. And I have to make this really clear because people do that and then I'm like, how do I even grade this? This isn't what I asked you to do, right? Okay, so that's the first reason. The second reason is upper level academic writing looks like this, right? They are direct and straightforward. They say, I will argue that um, teaching a smaller classroom of students is more effective for students and produces better success rates, right? When you look up like research and academic articles, you're gonna find that's what they say and you automatically know what they're talking about before you even have to read the article. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's why I have my students go here. For now, I want you to write like this only in your thesis statement, okay? Later, we can take these parts out and it will still make sense and I'll advance you in that direction, okay? But don't use I anywhere else, only right here. Cool? All right. Lastly, we have, so we have our counterclaim, we have our overall claim, and then we have subclaims. So in high school, you might have learned these as your three reasons why. These are your three reasons. Three reasons why the advertisement is effective in selling the product, right? Okay, well, your three reasons for this are the three rhetorical appeals, logos, pathos, and ethos. Okay, and I'm gonna say a few things without writing them here so you guys can really, really get this because I think students miss this sometimes. I want you literally you guys know what literally is, right? Like we use that word sometimes and we don't actually mean it. I'll be like, I'm literally dying today. Okay, no you're not, because you're alive, right? And I am guilty of this, so. Um, I literally want you to write logos, pathos, and ethos here. Do not write anything else, okay? A lot of times students are like, no, I don't like that. That's too simple. No, it's not too simple. That's actually advanced. 
Because if you put logos as your claim one, so claim one here, but you have two examples of logos, you're gonna have a more advanced paper than the person that lists because of its use of um, data. So, so claim one, so claim two, so claim three, right? So if you say logos here and you have two examples of logos, that's a more advanced idea than just saying data, music, and ethical appeal or something. Right? So I literally want you to put logos, pathos, and ethos. And it's for the purpose of advancing your writing, giving you that opportunity to not put specific things here. Okay? Because that's actually lower level writing. So a lot of students, like, talk themselves in and out of that. They, like, second guess it. They're like, wait, she told us to literally put logos, pathos, and ethos here. But I don't really know if I should do that because that sounds like it's, like, not what I should be doing. That's what I want you to do. Okay? The other thing about that is how do you decide what order to put these in? So you put it in the order you're going to talk about it in your paper. That's the first thing that I want you to know. If I go in your paper, here's your thesis statement. It says logos, pathos, ethos. Your first paragraph better be about logos, right? Or I'm going to be like, why would you literally one sentence before this tell me you're going to talk about logos first and then you don't? That doesn't make sense. But people do that for some reason, okay? The second thing is, but you got to decide what order to put them in your paper. How do you decide that? Because you're not going to all say logos, pathos, ethos in that order just because that's what I said, hopefully. Maybe like when you're watching the ad, you and see like what comes up first. Okay, right. you could do that, but what if they're all in different orders? There's one example of logos, then one pathos, then two examples of ethos, then one logos, then pathos. You can do it by like how appealing it was, by like the most okay. appealing recent thing. Okay, so that's, that's what I would suggest. But how do you, do you put most appealing first or least appealing first? Most. Like. Think about it like this. You ready? Yeah. I love this example. It's my favorite. Okay. So if you guys want to convince me, just so you know, guys, every time you're trying to talk to someone and communicate a message, you're using rhetoric, mm -hmm. right? So if you guys want to convince me to give you class off all next week, right? Say it's going to be like, we're going to pretend we don't live in Texas and it's going to be freezing cold and like snowing and you don't want to drive here. And you guys want me to give you class all week. You want me just to like record lectures and post them so you can do stuff, right? Okay. I'm going to say to you, and this is actually going to happen if you ever want to convince me of something, I'm going to say to you, okay, think of three reasons why I should give you class off and I'll consider it, right? Okay. Are you gonna start by saying, all right, if you give us class off, we'll have extra time. We can take the time that it would take to drive here and sit in other classes and use it to work on your essay. Also, we will get to sleep in more. And lastly, we'll have more time for drinking and eating. Or what if I flip that around, right? Okay, first, Professor G, you should give us this class off, these class times off, because we'll have more time for drinking and eating. Secondly, we'll, we'll get extra sleep so we can perform better. Lastly, you should really give us this class off because we can use all the time for driving and other school activities that we would be wasting here to work on our essays. Which one was more effective? The second one, right? So what you want to do is, and I use that example because you guys usually will remember that, build your argument, right? Start with whatever your opinion is of what's the least effective appeal that you found, right? And then work your way up. Usually in a commercial, the most effective thing is, is pathos, okay, emotions. But it's your choice. I'm not going to be like, um, you did this wrong. Ethos is not the most effective in this commercial. I'm not going to do that, okay? As long as you stick with whatever you put there, okay? So always build your argument, right? Hook the reader in a little bit or your audience or whoever and then build it up. Alan, you're in sales, you know. You would do something like that too, probably, right? More than that. Yeah, see, more than that. See, he's probably an expert rhetoric user. I don't know what to say Over for that. Time. Yeah, probably. Better, much better than me. I'm not good. I can't. I don't. I'm, I'm like all pathos and nothing else. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. And we start working on stuff, right? And this is kind of a lot for a lecture, which is why I was telling you guys, like, eh, I'm going to let it sink in a little bit, and then we'll start. We do have um, paragraph structures in this class that I'm going to teach you guys on Tuesday of next week. Um, but for now, like for homework, 
Okay, I want you guys to like review this information, review, do your play pauses and your discussion boards, okay? Because that's gonna help you develop this paper a little bit. Um, they're gonna start like jogging your mind toward the topics and then review all, there's like a textbook chapter that you can read on Blackboard. There's a ton of stuff there for you to use as a resource. Um, so I beg of you, you're in a hybrid class. That means you spend a little bit of time with me and you spend a lot of time outside of class. Use those resources that are there for you. Um, and I'm gonna try to get y'all's papers graded soon. I'm gonna end this before I continue talking of what else I'm saying. Okay, I'm gonna do this first. So I can, sh ah, put that as like a piece in this video. Y'all, this video is gonna be so janky. It's gonna be awesome.